Hi, my name is Tom Broussard. Today we're going to talk about uh, reading the landscape of aphasia uh, from the perspective of a person with aphasia. This is part three, uh, talking about aphasia recovery. Um, and om almost all of my work has to do with my personal perspective on what had happened to me and how I happened to have recorded everything that was going on. Um, but again, my story is just my own story. So it really doesn't mean that everybody doesn't have their own story, uh, stroke story, to help all of us learn from you as much as you might like to think you're learning it from me. So anyway, um, that's what I'm doing today is this next step, uh, the third part of the uh, of the landscape of aphasia. Um, in this particular case, I realized as I got better that a large part of, of my um, improvement, um, my recovery, was self-directed, um, much more like um, adult learning than as if I'd been told by other people that I should do what they're telling me and then I would do those things. Uh, because most of the time, none of this had happened. Um, the and I was lucky enough, as you know, that I had recorded so much of what was going on for those first two years. I was writing in my diary, not realizing that what I was writing didn't make any sense. I recorded my voice for two years, again, not realizing that I was making all kinds of errors of which I was not aware. I thought I was speaking just fine, um, writing just fine. Um, but I did say that so that later, as I got better, then I could look back at the evidence of what I was doing and realized, oh, um, clearly I was getting better. How was it that I was getting better? And I had the evidence that showed the progression of me, quote, getting better uh, going forward. And it, everything had to do, uh, had an awful lot to do with adult learning. Um, and uh, that too is when I realized that the few hours of therapy I had, you know, 15 hours with my individual and 20 some hours with a group at Boston University, um, you know, 50 hours after working on this for a, a year, I began to see that there was a huge component of how I must have been getting better based on what my own body, my own mind was, was working on given that the 50 hours with other people, formal therapy, and very good uh, therapists, compared to what I figured that first year was 1,700 hours of work that I was, quote, doing without really realizing that what I was doing was making me get better. Um, and now I am urging the the uh, therapeutic community to use adult learning from the beginning so that when we are finished with our formal therapy, that we then go off on our own without, with no understanding of why um, for the next 1,700 hours, the next several years of recovery, um, that we have to have those tools. Somebody needs to teach us that uh, before we, quote, leave each other. Um, and that means that the SLPs, the speech language pathologies, should provide us from the beginning, sort of building up to our graduation uh, with formal therapy about lifelong learning, adult learning, um, because that is what we have to do once we leave the, the uh, office of the therapist for the last time. We have to have this information. Um, and I don't think that we're told that. Um, the There are many, many uh, components of adult learning, but I have six of them listed here. And I think they all work for all of us on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you have a stroke or not, um, because that is how we learn once we've left any formal therapy, whether it be, uh, I say formal therapy, formal education, elementary school, junior high, high school, college, graduate degrees, still it ends. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, formal therapy. Um, the PhD are called termination education because that's the last thing you're going to have formal. All the rest continues to be who you are, what you are, and now how you can continue to 
the experience you have to become uh, what will become in terms of learning. So the first one is self-direction. So these are the six, uh, my six um, uh, uh, parts of ad adult learning, uh, self-directed. Self -directed. Um, from my perspective, whether it's self-directed or as I refer to ha habit directed, an awful lot of what I was doing was habit derived. What the habits I had done for my whole life uh, of course, I had the stroke at 59. So that's 59 years worth of habit directed, hopefully um, uh, helpful uh, habits to, quote, make me get better. So I'm asking the SLPs to ask us uh, about our lives and what successful habits we had started prior to all of this. And I know it takes time and I know there's very little time for a therapist. Um, so I'm not trying to press anybody who works so hard to do what they do for all of us. But in those 30 minutes or 45 minutes, every day there has to be a substantial amount of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, talking about who were you before. Uh, and even if I'm not able to express that terribly well, um, just ask me those questions will then make me be thinking about what was it that made me successful before and maybe this could help me going forward all of this might be on the inside but at least asking those questions early and often uh, through those sessions could be very very helpful learn from others um i didn't know uh after months had gone by i still realized that i didn't know anybody else with stroke and aphasia uh, Unfortunately, many people never meet a person with stroke and aphasia. They really are alone. They're alone anyway, because now you can't communicate as you used to do. Um, so really, it was four months before I met a single person with stroke and aphasia. That's wrong. You should bring us in. Uh, there must be set up the uh, appropriate uh, uh, environment so that we can see people with stroke and aphasia a lot earlier than months and months later and begin to see that there really are other people like us and bring that to together uh, early in the formal component. It's just like you do in high school when people go to bring your parents to work day. Um, this is sort of like doing that and bring people into our lives earlier than those months and months later, not, not, not knowing how many other people there are <laughs> like us. Learn from life's experience. Um, the, I really, um, uh, need you, the therapist to, to tell us on day one, how the brain, uh, rebuild our language. I didn't figure that out until month years went, went by of understanding, reading as I was able to read, reading more about how the brain works. Tell us from the beginning, how the brain works and how then we can use our previous lives experiences based on um, how the brain works because then you begin to realize even if it's just on the inside because you can't yet express but tell us on day one okay tom this is how plasticity works this is how um aphasia uh, uh, recovery happens and to the degree that you did the same things with plasticity prior to your stroke. That's what neuroplasticity is all about. I'm telling you now how this is going to work again uh, going forward with more um, uh, work on your behalf years after you're done with the formal therapy. So explain all this to us from the beginning. And I say often because obviously we might not remember it, um, but provide us with that information early and often um, and help us learn based on who we were before based on what you now tell us how it was that what I did before is the same thing as what we have to do after the stroke. Um, the uh, relevant, relevant, the, um, there are all kinds of, of opportunities with uh, therapy when they will try to explain what is relevant with other people's understanding. So do you like sports? Do you like this? Do you like that? No. Just ask us, what do we like that is so important to us that allows us to learn certain things over many, many years? 
whatever is relevance, ask us what is relevance. Just don't tell us, do you like these flowers? Do you like these other things? No, ask us. And again, not that I have the answer because I can't yet express, but over time, as we come up to it or have uh, items that we can bring with us, even if I don't have it, I can have pictures. I can show you my, my uh, military ID and say, this is incredibly important to me. It's still in my wallet. Um, from 1969, um, that is what is important. That is what is relevant. And make sure that you know, that we know that that is important to me and therefore it should be important to you as well. Hands-on experience. Um, uh, tell us from the start about this, this persistent, of, of what is the uh, plasticity, this persistent language activity, and that is the key to recovery. So tell us that from the start and provide us with this hands-on experience. Um, as I did, I wrote a diary, a 500-page diary. Nobody told me to do that. That's what you have to tell us. Tom, it is important that you write in your diary, not because it's a fun thing to do. It is highly important from a hands-on perspective of how um, you get to begin to understand that is this persistent, repetitive um, language activities, cognitive activities that are part of how the brain uh, rewires itself. So tell us that from the start. Again, all of these questions that I urge you to do, it doesn't matter what the answer is. It matters what happens to me on the inside when you ask that question over and over and over. On the inside, I'll be starting to see the, the, uh, the, the, the formation of my previous activities, habits, uh, and my future habits using those past ones. So hands-on experience is very, very important. And then the last one is motivation. Um, I knew on the inside, I wanted to get better but I really didn't know what that would mean. I had no, I had no idea. Uh, tell us from the start that motivation and practice, those are the really the two pillars, if not the wings of that bird, uh, motivation and practice. Tell us from the beginning about practice based on hands-on experience and things like that. And the other is motivation. And again, based on who you were before your stroke, what 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 did you like before? What were you motivated about before? And again, even if I can't yet tell you that, if you keep asking that on the inside, since as we all understand, we've lost our language, but not our intellect, keep asking us those questions as I continue to consider uh, and ponder on the inside what this means. And to the degree that I was motivated before to do whatever I might have done and what you have done, um, to help uh, be more successful in your life, you will be understanding and using that again going forward, uh, such that, as I've always said, uh, that uh, you, can't, you can't just wish and, and hope that makes it true. Um, you have to be told, as I always say, like the little engine that could, um, that I think I can, I think I can, thought is more than half the battle. Talk about that ask us those questions at the beginning uh, and throughout, as opposed to just doing these little snippets of, of uh, really tests and quizzes just to see how, quote, I'm improving, not making us become more improving based on those quizzes and tests. Um, the, the SLPs are as wonderful as they possibly have always been. They are cheerleaders. They really are cheerleaders. And that is a large part of how motivation ha happens. That's why you have cheerleaders. Um, the cheerleaders are the ones who can set a great example of motivation, spirit, and positive energy. But if there's a cheerleader, there also has to be a player. There are people out on the field. They have to continue that work. And the principles of, of uh, adult learning should be applied to everybody in the game, right? You can't just have a cheerleader with nothing else to work with. So you have to actually put them out on the game, um, out on the court, uh, out on the field, things. 
Yes, you have to do these things. That is how you'll get better. Don't just say, oh, it's wonderful that you are doing these wonderful things without yet telling us what those things have to be. The, the, uh, uh, the cheerleaders have to coach us and again, tell us that from the beginning that this is what is needed in terms of uh, asking what has motivated you before and using that again going forward um, and, and making sure that the self-directed uh, approach to long-term, I say long-term uh, personal therapy has to be done long before uh, the, the, the game ends, the sprint ends, and the real running, the real marathon starts. <sighs> Thank you very much for today's presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at the next presentation. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.